Coming up on today's Locked On Angels, Rysel Iglesias was tendered a qualifying offer. We're going to tell you what that means. David Fletcher and Jared Walsh did not win Gold Glove. We're going to break that all down and what it means historically. And we're answering your free agency questions in today's Monday Mailbag. That's all right now in a jam-packed Locked On Angels. <laughs> You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Angels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day every single day, especially here in the offseason. we got a ton to talk about here today. I'm Steve Granado, your host. You can follow me over on Twitter at Steve Granado, G-R-A-N-A-D-O. And of course, our Locked On account is at Locked On Angels. Before we get started here in today's episode, again, we're talking about everything that happened here this weekend. Um... Don't forget about my merch. I'm wearing it right now. If you're watching on YouTube, the 2-7 merch is in. It has come in. It is awesome. It looks great. Great prints. Everything fits great. You should check it out over on Redbubble. This is the 2-7 logo, the original logo. Of course, we have the Just the Halo logo. We have the Shohei Otani logo. We got tons of stuff. Rory's words, all that good stuff. So check it out. It's linked in the episode description here on YouTube and, of course, on our audio side as well. I really encourage you guys to check it out if you like minimalist style stuff. This is going to be right up your alley, Angels-inspired gear. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into the big news here over the weekend. On Sunday was the deadline to offer contracts uh, to pending free agents, the qualifying uh, qualifying offers. So let's break it down into more layman's turn on what that means. I know there's a lot of fans that might not necessarily know what all these weird words mean and and all, all these like contract stuff. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a lot. So in, in the most layman's terms, this, this is what essentially happens is a guy like Rice Iglesias, his contract ends here in 2021. The Angels have their first, they're the first guys that have the opportunity to try and pick him up again. So what they have to do is either find a way to extend him, sign a new contract, or offer him what is a qualifying offer. And that's the latter part is what the Angels decided to do, which is set by the MLB as a league minimum to be, or it's the same contract for everybody, one year. $18.4 million. So that is what the Angels offered. Right. So Iglesias is the qualifying offer. So it's a contract for 2022 for $18.4 million. That's what the Angels did. Um, Rice Iglesias now has 10 days. So he has all the way until November 17th to decide if he's going to take that or if he's going to go to free agency. So that is what it, it, essentially the ball is now in Rice's court. Obviously, Rice Iglesias was a massive part of the Angels bullpen, if not the biggest part of the bullpen this year, and was one of the most competitive closers in all of baseball this season. Um, I checked up on, on baseball reference and, and just looking at some of the comparisons uh, for a pitcher, uh, this state in his career, some guys that he's drawn comparisons of, uh, like uh, numbers wise, Brian Wilson, uh, Chad Cordero, Steve Ciszek, John Axford, Jose Valverde, and weirdly enough, Troy Percival. Um, so some of the guys that he's kind of comparable to at this point in his career. So clearly one of the better you know options that are out there right now and the fact that he's in-house and has gone on record and said that he was interested in staying here in Anaheim and was hoping to maybe find a way to find a contract here, um, that all poses for good things. So what does this mean overall? Um, again, he has 10 days to sign, to say yes. He has 10 days to say yes. If he says no, here, here, okay, this will be an easier way to break it down. Here are the three things he can do. He can say yes, straight up, take the offer. Boom. He'll test free agency next year. You can only get one of these. So he takes this one, says, yes, let's pitch here in 2022. Maybe he wants to improve his stock, which is admittedly still high right now. Um, but that is what he could do. He's just stay in Anaheim. Boom. That's option number one. Option number two is he denies this qualifying offer, but then signs with the Angels anyway on a multi-year deal. So, you know, there was a lot of talk, a lot of talk in late September about maybe, you know, at the end of the season trying to resign him and extend him and all that stuff. Obviously, that didn't work out right now, but they do have a little over a week now to try and figure it out if they can hash out a better deal. So he can do that. He can say no and he can sign a deal still with the Angels. During this whole process, he is free to negotiate with all teams. So he can do whatever he wants. He can talk to you. He can call the Cubs. He can call the White Sox. He can call the Yankees. He can call whoever he wants. And they can try and figure out a deal. So he is a like a like kind of like a restricted free agent, I guess. That's kind of how it kind of feels. Um, the last option and the option that Angels fans and 
me personally don't want is he can just become a free agent. That is within his power. He can just say, nope, see you later. Appreciate the business. I'm moving on. He could totally do that. But hopefully that doesn't become the case. Again, he has expressed interest in staying in Anaheim, which is huge. I think this is a, you know, I'm not breaking the mold here of what everybody's saying, but I think this is a pretty big one here that he has, he's got to be a part of this, this part of this bullpen moving forward. If the Angels want to compete, especially in 2022, he's still fairly young. He's in his early thirties. Uh, you know, a multi-year deal, a four or five year deal is not completely out of the cards at this point. He's still negotiating with the angels as far as we know. Um, but the, the good thing is with this. So what does this mean for the angels? As far as a franchise is concerned and a front office is concerned is that with this, the Angels will receive a compensation pick in a draft, in the 2022 draft, if he elects to go somewhere else. So that was the big thing is a lot of fans were worried that the Angels were not going to at least offer him the um, the qualifying offer here and they were going to lose everything. They just lose Rice Glaciers and he's gone, right? So that is not going to be the case now. And that's, you know, a bit of a saving grace because if, if Rice does end up walking, which he is in complete power to do at this point, at least the Angels will get something out of it. Um, the compensation pick would be competitive balance round B in 2022. That's after the second round. Um, there's some weird rounds <laughs> in the baseball draft. That's one of them, the competitive balance round B. Um, so that that's where that pick would fall. Famously, Mike Trout was a compensation pick by the Yankees back in 2009 when the Angels could not re-sign Mark Teixeira. They ended up getting the Trout pick, 25th overall. They had back-to-back -back picks in the first round, um, and that, that was the Mike Trout pick. Obviously, that's not, you know, that's a godsend and not always going to be the case. Um, but that is kind of, you know, where where we're where we're at with that kind of thing. So again, Reisel has till November 17th. Um, remember the Angels picked up Reisel and what now really is looking like a godsend of a trade. Um, Cincinnati and LA, December 7th of 2020. It was a player to be named later and no way Ramirez. And uh, then the Angels ended up sending Leonardo Rivas, who is still in the minors right now to the Reds to complete that, complete that trade. So it is one of the best trades the Angels have made in recent memory. Um, it clearly worked out in 2021. And if the Angels can figure out to extend him for multiple years, have at it, have at it. That might be the best way going forward. They still have a couple of days to figure it out uh, again, 10 days. So we'll see if that comes to fruition. Other light notes here on the qualifying side of things, you know, the guys that were going to become free agents that we already knew your Kurt Suzuki's and you know, your Juan Lagares and all that you knew that was going to happen, but Angels did not extend an offer to Alex Cobb, which probably seemed like the most likely secondary candidate to get that qualifying offer. He did not. And then Dylan Bundy, which he will go to free agency as well. So everybody's going to be a free agent here. Um, Reisel's the only one from that group that can potentially still stick around. So still things that need to be figured out. Um, there obviously need to be a lot of moves here in this offseason. We've talked about a lot of them here on previous episodes. I'll, you know, all of them are on our YouTube channel. You scroll back on the auditor side, they're all there. Um, so all that stuff is there. We have laid out our plans. We're actually going to talk some free agency here in our last segment today as well. Um, from your mailbag questions that you sent in over the weekend. Um, but yeah, so Reisel can still potentially come back and that is good. So take this win when you can. If they can work out a longer deal, that would be probably the best bet moving forward. If you trust what he was able to do, $18.4 million from a budget standpoint and where the Angels are at right now is a little high for a closer. But if they're really intending on competing next year and going all in on next year, which there really seems to be no reason not to at this point, um, then they're going to have to blow the budget out. You know, whatever dumb number they have in their head, they got to blow it out. Uh, I think that's just kind of, you know, plain knowledge at this point that the Angels have a chance to compete in 2022, 2023, and 2024. Might as well go in for it right now. So we'll see if Reisel signs. He can say yes. He can say no. There's a couple of ways he can go about this, but we will see. Reisel Iglesias may not be done with his time in Anaheim. Coming up next, we're talking about the disappointing Gold Glove Award results. But before we get that, does this sound familiar to you? You have one device that lets you catch a game live. You're trying to watch the Angels game there. And you got another one that you can stream your favorite shows. You're trying to like watch The Office on something else. And then you're pulling up like Lakers highlights on your phone. And then you're stealing your best friend's login for like all this other stuff. It's just a total mess every time you're trying to watch something, right? Well, I want to tell you about a simple way that lets you get all the entertainment you love without the hassle and a 
great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before, so you can watch all your favorite sports, the Angels, Ducks, all that stuff, all your favorite movies, and all your favorite shows in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no more buying other devices, trying figuring it all out. The best part, however, is my favorite part, no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required and content varies by package. All right, back here on Locked on Angels. We're talking Gold Glove Awards. We're starting to get the awards coming out here officially. Um, And, of course, the Angels were up for two Gold Gloves, David Fletcher and Jared Walsh at second and first base, respectively. Neither of them came away with a win here in this category, which is a bummer. Um, Winning Gold Glove at second base was Marcus Semien, who had a terrific year uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays, he is, by the way, a uh, uh, is a free agent here. He was offered a qualifying offer. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, so he he is uh, he's the winner here at second base, and then winning the award at first base is Yuli Gurriel from the Houston Astros. Um, for both of these guys, um, both Fletch and Walsh, it was their first time nominated. So you know, hats off to these guys. They really locked down the right side of the infield and. Uh, Kind of a surprise, right? Because we remember heading into 2021, we had only seen very little of Jared Walsh and we're very impressed with him in the pandemic shortened season, the 60 game sprint. So heading into 2021, you didn't really know what you were going to get out of Walshy at uh, first base. And, you know, with the fallout of Albert Pujols and that whole mess of a situation, don't even need to get into that. But uh, yeah, that that's a Pretty heck of a a good turnaround there. If you were expecting Jared Walsh to fall off the table, obviously he had a little bit of a rough stretch there during the dog days. But man, the bat turned around. The glove was there all season long, and and you can't really say more about how good Jared Walsh's 2021 season was on both sides of the baseball. Obviously, an all star bid this year. David Fletcher he had a heck of a year at second base. He had some rough times with the bat as well. It was definitely a down year for Fletch. Um, but I mean, you, you can never take away the glove, right? The glove is definitely there. And both of these guys had one heck of a season. Um, I wanted to dive into the history book a little bit here and see what the uh, wh- what this means historically, right? So the Angels have won a, a good fair amount uh, of gold gloves throughout the last 60 years. And most notably, most of them have come from the outfield and weirdly, none of them for Mike Trout, as we have talked, I've talked about at least a hundred times, obviously not on the show because it's my first off season with you folks, but. Yeah, Trouty still never won one. Obviously, he wasn't going to win this year, but that that's a conversation for another day. Um, here, are, here are the last Angels Gold Glove winners. It was 2017, Martin Maldonado, a catcher, and Andrelton Simmons for the shortstop position, obviously. And that's the only time in franchise history that the Angels have won multiple gold gloves in one year, Maldonado and Simmons in 17. As far as the positions are concerned, uh, Jared Walsh, last, or rather at first base, I should say, the last first baseman the Angels had to win the award. Got to go back a ways. 95 and 96, JT Snow was the last uh, Angel to win the position of uh, win the gold glove at first base back in 1995 and 96. Two other uh, gold glove winners at first base, Jim Spencer in 1970 and Victor Payot, a.k.a. Victor Power or Vic Power in 1964. The only three uh, players to ever win the first base gold glove award for the Angels. And of course, four of those awards, two of them belonging to JT Snow. And it's been a really long time since the Angels have won it at second base. The only guy who has ever won it in Angels franchise history at second base Base, Bobby Knopp. Bobby Knopp won it three straight years in 66, 67, and 68. So it's been a really long time since the Angels have won a gold glove over at second base, which is kind of ridiculous when you think about Howie Kendrick, uh, that he never won one over at second base. Eric Ibar has won a, a gold glove in Angels history over at short, um, but the second base position has not been won since Bobby Knopp in 1968. Angels were a very, very young franchise at that point. Bobby Knopp was one of the bigger stars um, up the middle, especially, and one of the first big names in Angels history. Um, and one of the kind of like the main guys, you know, one of those main guys uh, early on in MLB uh, Angels history. So, 
kind of a long time running, and, and it's been a bit of a drought here. It's not the longest drought that the Angels have ever had in franchise history. Um, they've gone much longer without winning a gold glove, but it's been quite some time uh, since 2017. Obviously, Simba had a heck of a 2017 year. Marty Maldonado was, I mean, <laughs> one of the best catchers we've had, especially in recent memory behind the plate. Uh, probably the best defensive catcher prior to him was, I, I would go ahead and just throw Jeff Mathis in there. It's been a while since the Angels have had just a straight-up lockdown catcher uh, behind the plate, but Martin Maldonado was it in 2017. So definitely a bummer. Uh, you got to take the win when you can here. David Fletcher and Jared Walsh, I mean, hats off. They had pretty darn good years, and uh, you know, it's nice to see that they got some recognition you can't fault, you know, it's it's hard to be like, oh, well, you know, Marcus Simeon didn't deserve it. I mean, Marcus Simeon had an incredible year for the Toronto Blue Jays after getting shipped out there from Oakland. Yuli has been a great first baseman for the Strohs for years and years and years. So, you know, it, it's <laughs> high praise to lose to guys like that. They are locked down defenders and just great ball players all around. Um, you know, a lot has been made, especially recently about the quote unquote sham of uh, a gold glove award. But, you know, it still is an honor nonetheless um, to be nominated. And I got to imagine Fletch and Walsh are happy just to be in the conversation at a still fairly young part, especially for Walsh in their careers. And it's not like Fletch is, you know, 36 or something. Uh, you know, he's still early on in his career. So I, I wouldn't put it past him to be nominated again here in the future. It's a bummer they weren't able to win it this time around, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. So tip the cap to Fletch and Walsh. They had heck of a heck of a season over on the right side of the diamond, and uh, hopefully they'll win one one day. All right, coming up next, we're talking free agency again. We're taking your questions in our Monday mail get bag. But before that, I want to tell you, I love Thanksgiving. It is legitimately my favorite holiday. All the good food, the treats, the turkey, the pumpkin pie. Ooh, but that pumpkin pie, right? Full of calories, full of sugar. You know what? Thanksgiving is the perfect time, however, for Built Bars. It's the new holiday dessert. Feast on something delicious and feel good about it. Because that slice of pie, probably over 300 calories in that bad boy. Built Bars, 130 calories, most of them. Four grams of sugar and plenty of protein. Replace the coconut cream pie with a coconut built bar or the raspberry built bar instead of a raspberry pie. There's tons of good flavors and you can replace any pie or any sweet treat with it. They're low calorie, low carb, low fat and high in protein. And of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Built is a great option for when you're hungry. If Thanksgiving isn't coming soon enough, go for a Built Bar or two. And there's new surprises all this month with limited time flavors arriving at Built.com regularly, so make sure to check out the website. There's nothing like a Built Bar on Black Friday, so mark your calendar. Black Friday's coming up. There's going to be a huge event with tons of surprises. Go to Built.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, back here in our final segment on today's Locked on Angels. We asked for questions, as we always do. Of course, if you want to ask us questions, ask us over the weekend because we have Monday mailbags all throughout the offseason. So let's go ahead and dive right in. We got a couple of questions here today. Here's the first one. Uh, here's a tweet. I believe the Halos go after Joe Kelly, Chris Taylor to play second base with Fletcher going to short. Sign Scherzer if possible. If not, then sign Robbie Ray and Marcus Stroman. Trade for Reds Castillo or one of the Marlins' young arms. Take a chance on Verland or Thor. What do you think? Wow, there's a lot of moves right there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and, and take them uh, piece by piece here. Joe Kelly, yes. Um, he has become a free agent. Uh, did not uh, get the option there taken by the Dodgers, so he has become a free agent. I think that would be a great pickup uh, to help lock down the bullpen. Sure, if the Angels can sign Joe Kelly to a two-year deal. Why not? He was a really good, a really good reliever down the stretch, especially in the postseason. He could really eat some innings for you. And of course, can start or open if need be. Chris Taylor uh, looks like he's might be going back to the Dodgers. There was extended the qualifying offer. Hey, I'd love to have Chris Taylor. Heck of a ball player. We talk a lot about having a utility option. The Angels do not have a utility option right now. Chris Taylor could totally be that and could be a massive piece. That's if he denies. The Dodgers qualifying offer, just like Reisel, he has until the 17th. Um, with Fletch going to short, possibly. We'll talk about that here in a second. Sign Scherzer if possible. Yes, there was no uh, draft pick 
tied to him. Scherzer is free. What do you make out of his age and what is left and the injury he sustained at the end of the year? Who knows? They'll they'll hash that out. They're smarter than me. If they can sign Scherzer, why wouldn't you go after him? He still has shown that he can pitch at his age. Um, if not, then sign Ray and Stroman. Why not all three? Porque no las tres. <laughs> all of them are definitely uh, prime. Uh, uh, you know, Robbie Ray. Um, you know, a bit of a resurgence this year. I don't know what you kind of take out of that. Uh, Marcus Stroman. Obviously, I have made my case for Marcus Stroman. We will make, be doing that actually, by the way, tomorrow. Uh, we'll be doing a whole episode on Marcus Stroman. Um, that's on tomorrow's episode. Trade for Reds Castillo or one of the Marlins' young arms. As far as the Marlins are concerned, oof, I don't know if they're probably going to be really wanting to part with guys. The Marlins uh, have a lot of pitching um, and a lot of young pitching, but I don't know how. Uh, how much they want to part with them right now. They have a lot of control right now, and that team is looking pretty darn good for the next couple of years um, and can probably make some strides here moving into 2022 and 2023. Um, take a chance on Verlander or Thor. I wouldn't take a chance on Verlander. I would edge towards Thor a little bit more. Um, that's obviously Noah Syndergaard, for those who don't know, uh, who is becoming a free agent as well. But he was offered a qualifying uh, offer as well. So lots to think about there. There are lots to move. Uh, I, I don't know if the Angels are going to go for trades. I think they might want to test the free agency market first since it's so strong this year. You could probably get away with only doing free agent signings instead of trades. Um, because if you're trying to get, you know, Marlins arms or, you know, Castillo from the red, Luis Castillo, that probably means you're losing Adele or Marsh and the angels don't have a ton of extra depth there that it's ready at the major league level in the outfield. So they probably are going to try their hardest to hang on to Adele or Marsh. Thanks so much for your uh, question. Let's move on to the next one. This is coming from Ruben Rosas thoughts on Griffin canning. Do you think he'll just be a depth piece trade piece or a starter slash reliever in the major league roster? He's extremely inconsistent and I find it hard to believe he'll have a spot in the rotation with what he's shown on the mound in the last few years. Thanks Ruben for your question. First time you've checked in here. I appreciate it, dude. Griff, I think uh, all a lot of what is going to be made of 2022 for Griffin Canning, one, obviously health, that's everybody, so that's a caveat for everybody, but I think it's going to more so do with what the Angels do in free agency. Um, are they going to, because we've talked about this before, if the Angels sign some starters here, two or three, I've, I've pitched three, ironically, pitch, I've pitched three starters the Angels need to sign, you know, as a bare minimum. Um, I would feel most confident with that. That pushes Griffin Canning to a long relief role or a five or a six, right? So that I think that's where we need to come at it for is like, okay, where do the Angels think about Griff Canning? I don't think they want to put tons of pressure on him coming off of a couple of injury-plagued seasons. Um, you mentioned his inconsistency. Yeah, he's still super young, dude. He's still super young, so you got to give him some time. He's... Not everyone's trouty. Not everyone can just come up and shove in the, when they first get there, right? So you got to you gotta come in from that angle. Now, if the Angels don't get anything here and, you know, fall in free agency again, well, then Griffin Canning's going to be part of the rotation straight up. No ifs, ands, or buts. He's going to be a part of the rotation. Um, I think his stock is probably fairly low, so there's not much that you can get back that is going to make tons of uh, tons of sense at the major league level if the Angels are trying to compete in 2022. But yeah, maybe Griffin Canning's a guy to look at uh, from a trade standpoint that might tip the cap or tip the pitch rather uh, uh, of what the Angels are planning to do in the offseason. I don't think that they're looking to move him necessarily. Um, I think if they're able to sign some guys, then Griffin Canning is just a guy that can be pushed a little bit deeper into the bullpen or into the uh, starting rotation. And then you just go, hey, Figure it out back there. We're not expecting a ton from you. Just go out and pitch and figure it out. And then if you end up being this incredible pitcher and we have to move you up the rotation, good problem to have. Uh, thanks again for your question, Ruben. Uh, and one more here. This is coming from Carlos, AngelsFan04 on Twitter. What's your prediction on the Angels starting shortstop? Angels have a hole at shortstop. We talked about it here briefly earlier in the show about David Fletcher. You know what, Carlos? I'm going to take your question one step further. And say who is going to be the opening day shortstop for the Angels? You know what? I'm gonna have I'm gonna have some fun with this one. It's Monday. Let's have some fun with it. Uh, I'm gonna say the Angels' opening day shortstop will be either Jordy Mercer or Marcus Semyon. Why not? Uh, there you go. The Angels don't need a big bat. Obviously, you will always take an extra big bat. They don't necessarily need one. They need a League average guy, if they want the big bat, Marcus Simeon is one and is a 
really, really good infielder. Um, Jordy Mercer, a little bit up there in age. If the Angels go after pitching, maybe they look to try and skimp a little bit up there on the middle infield and go for somebody a little bit older. Older. So there you go. There, Those are my two predictions. If it's not one of them, it'll be Fletch, and we'll have a new second baseman. So there you go, Carlos. That's what I'm going to say. Obviously, we've talked about it. We talked about it all last week during minor league week. There isn't an option right now. Um, the Angels did make a couple of moves here, uh, claiming Andrew Vasquez from the Yankees. There, there looks like they're trying to maybe bulk up a little bit. Uh, they moved Brendan Davis to the 40-man roster over the weekend as well. So there are a couple of guys that maybe they're looking in-house to try and fill fill that middle infield, but it doesn't look like you're going to get much out of middle infield from in-house stuff. Can Andrew Vasquez be a godsend out of nowhere? Sure, why not? Everybody can. Um, but I think they probably test free agency here. Um, I don't think they're going to trade for a shortstop or a second baseman. That probably is not likely, um, especially given the depth. I don't think they also you know, are going to go after a Carlos Correa or a Trevor Story or anything like that. Um, so if I had to pick, um, I would say Jordy Mercer just just for fun. I don't know. And if I'm right, I look like a genius. <laughs> Thanks so much for your question, Carlos. Really appreciate you checking in. Um, don't forget, you can always send us questions over on Twitter at Locked On Angels. Of course, my Twitter as well is at Steve Granado, G R A N E D O. And you can always call our voicemail line. Make sure to call us. I want to hear your voices um, and talk with you. That's 714 409 6396. 714 409 6396. It's in the episode description. So you can always copy and paste it and save it in your phone. Just save it in your phone. You're probably watching this or listening to this on your phone. So you might as well save it in your phone right now and call us whenever you get a question. Don't forget about my merch right here. Two seven merch looking pretty good. Not going to lie. Got the two seven stickers available as well. If you're looking for some minimalist angel style apparel, it is available. Red bubble. It's in the episode description. The Shohei Otani logo looks sweet. Get that on a white tee and make that your opening day. Look, I mean, if you're watching on YouTube, I mean, I think I got my opening day look right here. Check it out. Got that Los Angeles hat with the silver halo. I got the two seven shirt. I mean, this ain't a bad opening day. Look, I'll see you in April. Um, if you're interested in things that I have done, podcasts that I have done, I have another podcast called Our Game. It's examining the Latin contributions to American baseball. We asked the question, who is the Latino Jackie Robinson? And of course, found out that the answer got way more complicated. Eight-part docuseries, great off-season listen. If you're looking to learn something different, 200 years of baseball history covered on Our Game. It's free. It's available everywhere. Check it out. That's Our Game, O-U-R-G-A-M-E. And of course, if you want something completely different, you can check out my other podcast called Movies I Should Have Watched, where my best friend Alex and I are watching a bunch of old movies. And seeing if they hold up in 2021. Movies like Back to the Future, Jaws, Delma and Louise, RoboCop, a bunch of old movies. And we actually are watching Moana this week, coming out on Wednesday. So if you're looking for a newer movie, we're seeing if Moana is any good. I had never seen it, so we checked it out. Anyway, that's movies I should have watched, audio podcast platforms everywhere. I want to thank you for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. For your second listen, check out Locked On MLB Prospects. Host Aram Layton is a prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. It's free and available on all platforms. folks that's going to do it for us in today's lockdown angels thanks again for checking us out here we are starting our making the case series tomorrow we'll be talking about marcus stroman and of course we will be continuing that throughout the offseason making the case for specific free agents trade targets or anything like that as we really dive into postseason content that's going to do it for me i'm steve granado thanks for checking us out we'll talk to you guys tomorrow five days a week still here on lockdown angels all right guys later